Well, I guess I can add Commodore to my resume now. I do, in fact, have a resume. I do. It has some very strange things on it now. Of course, it has Commodore. It has Drunken Lush. It has Variety Entertainer, which is essentially that I'm a human Jack Russell Terrier and do stupid human tricks for money. Thank you. It also says I am a character performer, which is the greatest lie you could possibly put on a resume. It says I get to play many roles. I can be whatever I want. I could be the devil, and I could even play that part. Better than that, I can be just a clumsy, oafish rhino and get hired to do that at children's parties. This is a real thing. This is the best thing you can put on your resume. And I really didn't get the value of it till recently. Um, one of the parts I play here is I play host, which is sort of the honest version of myself in better pants. But I play host and I try to be very brave, which is not at all like me, but I, I, try, to, I try to do a good job of making everybody up here look good. Um, and we, we do okay with that. I learned about the value of character in my other role as the director of the Circus Freaks performing troupe. That's one of them. Those are their fans. Both of them are here. That was really good. Well, they are. Uh, we had a revelation within our troupe not too long ago. For the longest time, we were hired to be jugglers. We were hired to go out there and be fancy and do cool tricks. And then, and it was Rachel Hullett. I will never forget, uh, never forget this moment. Rachel walks up to me and says, I want to create a character. I said, cool, what does she do? She goes, well, she's a clockwork doll. I said, but what does she do? Expecting, oh, she hula hoops, she dances, she sings. She walks around and she is cute. She's a 200-year-old doll with a brain that's only two years old because that's when we wound her up. And I said, I'm not exactly sure what to do with that. She goes, don't worry, don't worry. I have a whole story. I have a whole plan. And she proceeds to tell me about how the circus freaks acquired a 200-year-old Baroque clockwork doll. This amazing story where we were just starting out and we wanted to order a box. We were saving up all our money. M Monkey had been busking like crazy and he saved up all his money and ordered us a dozen used kazoos. <laughs> the kazoos came from Dinkelmeyer's Discount Novelty Emporium. Purveyors, <laughs> purveyors of, and I love this, industrial strength whimsy. <laughs> and so suddenly we had this order come in. This is the story. The order comes in, we open the box, and there's Tick, and we don't know what to do with that, but we also don't want to be held accountable for the fact that we've gotten this very expensive thing, so we use her as a hat rack for two years. <laughs> and according to the story, Moxie the Clown, who is one of our, our character clowns, came along and figured out she's a child. She figured out how to wind up the brain of the clockwork doll. And I thought, oh, this is G, and all of this stuff that we're never going to tell anyone. So first of all, I got an excuse to do that tonight. <laughs> it's good stuff. But then we suddenly had this new thing, which was a character performer, and character became the order of the day. In fact, Rachel's character, Tick, is one of our most popularly booked characters. She actually gets to go out and do more children's birthday parties than any of us. She gets to do festivals. They love seeing her. We started bringing new performers on board this year. Uh, we call them the Junior Freaks. We have any in the house tonight? Do we have any juniors here? Woo! Oh, I got a couple of juniors in the house. That's pretty cool. So we started bringing the Junior Freaks, and one of them walked up to me, a girl by the name of Catherine Chambers, and she said, I have an idea. I want to play Tick's arch nemesis. And I said, I said, now wait a minute, wait a minute. She's a two-year-old. I mean, I mean, she's 200 years old, but the brain, she's two. She goes, that's easy, it's not a problem. I just don't tell her I'm an arch nemesis. I go, I go okay, 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 let me, let me hear it. And she says, I'm going to play a rag doll that has been sitting staring in her face for 92 years. And I said, okay, and I'm listening to all this. And I'm hearing another character that doesn't, juggle or dance or do any of the things we do and I'm listening and she says and, and you guys ordered me by accident and showed up and then I finally was free of the steampunk hussy that was Tick <laughs> and then I find her again you gotta understand the character she's created is essentially a cross between Raggedy Ann and Betty White <laughs> and she goes I want to inflict this on the troop and I went I don't know I said show me show me is a dangerous word I said show me so she came out with us to a couple of workshops and a couple of festivals and she had the most brilliant idea. She said, I'm going 
to constantly chase Tick and find ways to destroy her and never do it. I'm going to fail every time. And the audience goes, Posey, the name of the character, Posey, you're great, you did such a great job, and you failed, and Tick is awesome, and everybody cheered, and I got to see the most amazing example of what we've come to call a supporting character. It was this idea that she could even be the arch nemesis of another character, throwing the character continuously under the bus and making that performer look good in the process. And I watched it and I realized there is somewhere where I see that every week. I play the host and you guys, will you play the audience? No, no, think about it. Think about this for a moment. Just, just take a moment on this one. There's a curtain over there. And as you know, if you're in front of the curtain, you're on stage. The curtain's over there. We're all on this side of the curtain, which means we're all in the show together. You guys are the supporting cast of the show, and I want to give you guys a hand for being here. Please give yourselves a hand. And I have to tell you, in all the shows I do and all the times I've been under a bus, metaphorically or otherwise, Rhino does stupid things. I want to tell you this, I have never seen support like I see here, and I thank you guys so much for bringing it, especially for people who come and tell me every time they perform here, I have never seen that before. Thank you and welcome to the open stage.